hello everybody my name is Lizzie if you're new here thanks for stopping by I'm glad you could be here with me today let's get into this video because we're going to diverge from talking about my plant the sea and talk about some weird plant science and if not weird plant science and just weird science generally not weird science but an interesting scientific question is human photosynthesis possible yes you heard me correctly there is a sect of people that believe that humans can photosynthesize or will be able to photosynthesize in the future and that that will replace our need to eat drink water so we're going to go through some sources in no particular order trying to answer this question let me know in the comments section if you're convinced this is a thing or if you're convinced this is not a thing I'm excited. I'm really excited for this video. Of all life on Earth, plants are remarkable for their ability to turn sunlight into food in a process called photosynthesis. Next time you look at a tree, appreciate its ability to thrive on sunlight. Human photosynthesis doesn't exist. We must farm, slaughter, cook, chew, and digest, efforts that require time and calories to accomplish. As the human population grows, so does the demand for agricultural goods. Not only are our bodies expending energy, but so are the farm machines we use to make food. This leaves a considerable footprint. The United States agricultural industry is responsible for 10% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the USDA. But what if scientists could engineer human photosynthesis by changing our bio biology, by changing our biology to evolve this plant-centric skill? If they could, just imagine how much time and energy people would save. We'd free up time for other pursuits. We'd eliminate food's carbon footprint. We'd do away with starvation, malnutrition, and food-related allergies and illnesses. Sure, if we could photosynthesize, we would not have to spend time eating. And we could get more done, I guess, theoretically. This is giving me very much Sims 3 vibes where I would hack my Sims and just slide their hunger and thirst meters to the acceptable level so that they could stay up and do other crazy things that night, like maybe burn their house down. I don't know. I miss that computer game. Did anyone else play Sims? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on. Human evolution predictions are impossible to make, but perhaps using modern tools from biotechnology and genetic engineering, we could modify ourselves to photosynthesize like plants. What would it take? Some animals photosynthesize. Admittedly, human photosynthesis seems a bit far-fetched. But plants aren't the only life forms that photosynthesize. There are a handful of examples of photosynthesis in the animal kingdom. For example, the pea aphid uses pigments to harvest sunlight and transfer it to their cells for energy production, according to nature. <laughs> nature is a hyperlink. According to nature, the oriental hornet relies on a pigment in its exoskeleton called xanthopterin. I need to know how to pronounce that. I can't just go on with, I just can't go on. I am not claiming to be a scientific authority, obviously, but I need to know how to pronounce a certain scientific terms when we're talking about them, at least. Okay. Xanthopterin. Oh, no, YouTube isn't really helping me out right now, so I'm going to go ahead. The oriental hornet relies on a pigment in its exoskeleton called xanthopterin to turn sunlight into electrons. Recently, a team of students won a science competition with their idea to extract the pigment and use it as a form of renewable electricity to power a car's battery. When the emerald green sea slug, who sounds opulent, Alicia chlorotica, eats algae, it requires the plant cellular components called chloroplasts that produce chlorophyll. Voila, the slug is able to photosynthesize light. Experiments have shown that these slugs can go without eating for nine months, surviving only on the energy it gets from sunlight, reports National Geographic. If other members of the animal kingdom can photosynthesize like plants, can humans? My first reaction to this is no. Humans don't have chlorophyll, right? I think that sea slugs would be able to photosynthesize and it's not have to eat for nine months because they're slugs what do they do they don't have nine to fives 
Do they have to do anything besides like slug around? No, they're slugs. Continuing on. It's not easy being green. Unfortunately, getting humans to photosynthesize sunlight is next to impossible. Unlike the tiny pea aphid, the hornet, or the slug, humans demand an enormous amount of energy to survive. A full-grown human needs between 1,600 and 2,400 calories per day, according to the U.S. government's Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion. <laughs> the human digestion system breaks down food into glucose and our stuff... <laughs> And our cells store the energy as a molecule called ATP. Our body's demand for glucose is higher than photosynthesis can accommodate. Associate Professor Lindsay Turnbull of the University of Oxford determined that if the surface area of an adult woman contained chlorophyll like a leaf, it would produce only 1% of the daily energy requirements for the person to survive. To live by photosynthesis alone, the woman would need a green body with a surface the size of a tennis court. That would be a big lady, large and in charge. There are other issues as well. Let's say we had green skin with cells that contained chloroplasts. We would also need porous skin to take in carbon dioxide, a chemical in the air required during photosynthesis, says the American Chemical Society. Scientific research has not yet reached a level where genetic engineers can manipulate the human body enough to make all of these biological requirements possible. Although human evolution predictions don't include photosynthesis, people do have the capacity to solve other problems that threaten our survival, such as starvation, malnutrition, and foodborne illnesses. Okay, so we've started with some evidence as to how humans cannot photosynthesize, or if we could, that it would require us being the size of a tennis court. Oh, I can't find that, um... I can't find that. Excuse me. It's still the morning in my brain. I can't find that science competition right now from this article from the hyperlink. So I'll find that later. Let's open up the one that says according to nature. <laughs> okay, this is about the P aphid. How many different ty types of aphids do we have to worry about? Photosynthesis-like process found in insects. The biology of aphids is bizarre. They can be born pregnant and males sometimes lack mouths, causing them to die not long after mating. In addition to their list of anomalies, work published this week indicates that they might also capture sunlight and use the energy for me metabolic purposes. Aphids are unique among insects in their ability to sense it. <sighs> I gotta slow down, man, slow down. Aphids are unique among in- <laughs> Are y'all still with, are y'all still with me? I'm still not with myself, all right. Aphids are unique among insects in their ability to synthesize pigments called car carotenoids. Many creatures rely on these pigments for a variety of functions, such as maintaining a healthy immune system and making certain vitamins, but all other animals must obtain them through their diet. Entomologist Alan Robichon and his colleagues suggest that in aphids, these pigments can absorb energy from the sun and transfer it to the cellular machinery involved in energy production. Although unprecedented in animals, this capability is common in other kingdoms. Plants and algae, as well as certain fungi and bacteria, although also since I thought this would be way easier than it's turning out to be. Although unprecedented in animals, this capability is common in other kingdoms. Plants and algae, as well as certain fungi and bacteria, also synthesize carotenoids. And in all of these organisms, the pigments form a part of the phyto photosynthetic machinery. Machinery, that's cool. Homemade harvesters. Taking their cue from the 2010 finding that the high levels of carotenoids found in aphids are homegrown, Robichon and his team set out to investigate why the insects make such metabolically expensive chemicals. Carotenoids are responsible for aphid pigmentation, and an aphid's color determines the kind of predators that can see it. The body color of Robichon's lab aphids is affected by environmental conditions, with the cold favoring green aphids, optimal conditions resulting in orange ones, and white ones appearing when the population is large and faced with limited resources. When the researchers measured the aphids' level of ATP, the currency of energy transfer in all living things, the results were striking. Green aphids, which contain high levels of carotenoids, make significantly more ATP than do white ones 
Moreover, ATP production rose when the orange insects, which contain an intermediate amount of carotenoids, were placed in the light and fell when they were moved into the dark. The researchers went on to crush the orange aphids and purified their carotenoids. Oh, I didn't see this turn coming. Demonstrating that it was these extracts that could absorb light and pass this energy on. One of the authors, Maria Capovilla, would insist that much more work is needed before scientists can be sure that aphids truly photosynthesize, but the findings certainly throw up that possibility. The way that carotene molecules are arranged in the animals adds weight to their hypothesis. The pigments form a layer between 0 and 40 micrometers deep under the insect's cuticle, putting them in the perfect position to capture the sun's light. Nancy Morin, who was responsible for the original discovery that aphids have the genes for carotenoid production, points out that there are many unanswered questions. Quote, energy production seems to be the least of an aphid's problems. Their diet is loaded with excessive sugar, most of which they cannot use, she says, end quote. Perhaps the largest of an aphid's problems is when it shows up on my plants and I have to eradicate it. And that begs the question of why aphids would need to photosynthesize. But Capovilla speculates that a battery-like backup might help them in times of environmental stress, such as when they are migrating to a new host plant. Interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that at that point. But that is some cool facts about the photosynthesis-like process found in aphids. You're welcome. So the question they're asking here is, why do aphids make such metabolically expensive chemicals? It takes a lot of energy for aphids to produce the carotenoids. One, because it's a matter of life and death for them. And then they found that by looking at the aphids levels of ATP, the level of ATP was highest in green aphids. The more ATP, the more currency they have in their system, allows them to photosynthesize and absorb more light and pass this energy on throughout their system. All right, that's the most I can say about aphids, I think, at this point. Let's move on to another article. Ooh, what if humans had phytosynthetic skin? Well, according to the last article, we would have to be the size of a tennis court, so we'll see. Green skin is common in science fiction. From little green men to Hera Syndulla from Star Wars Rebels to Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy. But what if green skin were not just for fictional aliens? If humans had green skin, for instance, what if it granted us the ability to perform photosynthesis, which plants use to live off sunlight? Let's analyze what science says about similar abilities in other animals and ask award-winning science fiction author John Scalzi how he thinks humans might hypothetically benefit from photosynthetic skin. Yes, let's. Let us do that. Plant-like animals. Every animal consumes food to survive. In contrast, plants rely on photosynthesis to create their own energy. However, some animals do use sunlight for a range of capabilities. For example, a number of animals benefit from solar-powered molecules. The P. aphid produces pigments that, with the aid of light, generates adenosine. Oh, Lord. That, with the aid of light, generate ATP, the compound that powers reactions with cells. In addition, a stripe of yellow pigment on the exoskeleton of the oriental hornet converts light into electricity, which could help explain why these insects become more active during the middle of the day. I wish there were some clear explanation for why I become more active when the sun goes down. I guess I'll never know. Maybe I should ask the oriental hornet. Or an entomologist. Or a doctor. <laughs> or maybe it requires some self-reflection. I don't know. Moving on. Other animals make use of actual photosynthesis using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to produce sugars and other vital compounds. Plants and algae rely on chloroplast structures within their cells to carry out to carry out photosynthesis, but Alicia sea slugs can steal chloroplast from algae they graze on to help them live solely on photosynthesis for months. Wow, so that sea slug totally just mooches off of the algae they graze on and just steals it. That's pretty badass. We're learning a lot about the cell today, y'all. Hey, also, did y'all know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? I'll never let you forget it. 